and marimba rhythms start to play Dance with me, make me sway Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore Hold me close, sway me more Like a flower bending in the breeze Bend with me, sway with ease When you dance you have to be with me Stay with me, sway with me Other dancers may be on the floor Dear, but my eyes will see only you Only you have that magic technique When we sway I go weak I can hear the sound of violins Long before it begins Make me thrill as only you know how Sway me smooth, sway me Other dancers may be on the floor, dear, but my eyes will see only you. Only you have that magic technique. When we sway, I go weak. I can hear the sound of violins long before it begins. Make me thrill as only you know how. Sway me smooth, sway me now. When marimba rhythms start to play Dance with me, make me sway Like a lazy ocean that hugs the shore Hold me close, sway me more Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, yeah.
Babu. Happy birthday, Ma. Hi, Praveen. Happy 50th birthday and wishing you all the best. Happy birthday, Praveen. Happy birthday, Baba. Happy 50th birthday, Baba. Hi, Anaya. We, we wish, wish you a, a very happy birthday. Anaya, Chinna put me visits cause and chala chala to sosta on the wallamu. Chinna, you always allowed us to mess with your things and do. I've never been upset about it. You're the coolest brother I grew up with and may you get the best in the world. Chinna Pudu, Chinni Chinni Edo, Uthirthi Studios Chapta Unda Vallu. Aina Arvi, Mew Chala Nordels Kone Enjoy Jasta Unda Vallu. Hope we can get to meet soon. Last time we met in Chala Nyo Yesa, I'm looking forward to your next visit. Hope you have a beautiful day. family, if you could just go up to the cake cutting, we'll do the cake cutting now. Just to make your way. Later. Alright, perfect. So if I can get everyone please up standing. Or just be a, a bit of bats. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Robin. Happy birthday to you. Give me, give me, give me.
ahead thus far. So next one we're going to have is a little bit of a stand-up comedy. So I have here today Brad Oaks. So Brad's decision to take a professional stand-up comedy in 1989 has since seen him evolve into a popular and versatile performer, a veteran of a thousand, thousands of shows, television appearance and other media. Uh, you might know him from Hey Hey It's Saturday or Rove, that's, that's where I know Brad from. Uh, he works primarily on cruise ships, uh, therefore it might not be the last time that you may see him. First meeting him, he had made me laugh and I'm, I'm a very tough cookie to crack. And I just know that you all will have a hoot tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Brad Oaks. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you very much. Big hand for our uh, MC for the night. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm probably wondering why I'm wearing a mask. Well, in case this doesn't go well. Kathy Freeman, you know, the, uh, well, the strangest grace ever runner. She's come out in the uh, newspapers today. She said she's got a stalker. And I thought, Jesus, how fast is he? <laughs> I couldn't catch Kathy Freeman. <laughs> come on, through it. <laughs> Yeah, cheers, right? I don't really have anything to cheers with, but yeah, right. It's, uh, prevent, is it? Uh, happy birthday, son. Yeah, 50 years old. I'm looking forward to it myself. <laughs> All right, yes, yeah, so we're a medical person. You know that was absolutely crap. Um, we, uh, I, I, I'll tell you, I'm straight in. I'll tell you a bit about myself. About three years ago, I had a heart attack. Uh, I know it didn't work. I'm still here. And, uh, I know you're looking pretty shocked. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this too. This may have happened in your medical training. But, uh, I, was in a, I was in emergency. I was being worked on by a whole lot of dedicated health professionals. You might have heard about how people, uh, when they hover on the brink of life and death, that they float up out of their body. Right? But I was 150 kilos, right? so I only got up that, that high. <laughs> All right, it's going to be tough. All right. Uh, <laughs> As people say, the worst thing about doing comedy on a boat is if it's no good, you'll have to swim for it. And uh, I'm worried, I don't know if you all can swim. Yeah, all right, you're safe then. I'm ready. <laughs> you're good. All right, it's true about these people. They went upstairs to rehearse. Now, um, I, uh, look, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. We went through, we've gone through how many lockdowns now? I think six. Uh, things have changed, things have pivoted. I had to get wood for my fireplace, uh, very cold. And in my house, I rang the wood man, that's where you get wood. I rang up and I put up, I put up this voice, I thought it sounded posh. I've gone, wood man, my good man. Well, I need wood. How much wood do I need? He said, well, most people buy wood by the half ton. I thought, half a ton of wood, my goodness, that sounds expensive. What's that going to cost me? He said, it's $80. I went, 80 bucks. I can afford that half a ton of wood. I have never had a half a ton of anything. People would be impressed. I come around my house and go, that's my half a ton of wood there. No, no, I don't need to put my quarter of a ton of cheese. Right, cheese. Bring it around. He brings it around. I've seen a half a ton of wood. Mate, have you ever seen a half a ton of wood? Of course you have. It's a like a forest, right? And I said to him, mate, I had no idea that much wood was that much wood. How much uh, had we moved it? And he goes, well, I forgot to tell you on the phone, like, it's 80 bucks for the wood. There's another $10 if you want me to stack it. See, this is the catch. This is how they make their dough. It's like postage and hand now. But all right. Sorry, mate. I'm trying to move here. Uh, I, uh, I'm going, all right, go, stack, hurry. He comes back. I said, you've done that. He said, yeah. And I said, you want your dough? He said, yeah. And I said, listen, buddy, I've only got a $100 note. Is that a problem for you? He goes, well, yeah, when you change, what will we do? <laughs> I'm going, bugger it, mate. Stack it again. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really, I'm really trying to work with these people down here now. We're just going to get everybody just to move on down. Well, maybe you can move on up here. We'll just have, like, just one audience instead of one, like, great audience. And one guy's just thinking, what have I done with my money? Let's go down here. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> probably the worst thing. was just, when I go back, I'll be going through your cars. Now, um, I'm a, I'm a typical Australian, I'm pretty lazy, uh, I wasn't going to mention that. Um, you know, they did a survey of Australians, they found 70% of Australians admitted that they were lazy. All right, now the other 30% didn't do the survey. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're familiar with them. 
There's nothing wrong with being lazy. Lazy people like these, we're the problem solvers in the world. We're the people who say, there must be an easier way. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know when you sit down and watch television sometimes and you can't locate the remote control in it? Do what I do. At the start of the night, I get the remote and sticky tape it onto the dog. Now, people go, where's the remote? You go, <coughs> <laughs> it's lateral thinking, isn't it? No, well, it's being smart, isn't it? Being clever. But the best one I come up with, I was on, a, I was on tour. I was saying this really, like, come on in. Did you have good rehearsal? Yeah. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, I was on tour in Brisbane. I was staying in a very cheap hotel. I didn't have cooking facilities in my room, per se, right? Um, all I had was, a, 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 I had in my room for cooking, I had a pop-up toaster, form form. All right? And I thought, wait a minute. Because I really felt like some real cheese on toast. You know what I'm saying? Real cheese. Not so quite for me. But, where did you come from? I don't see. Anyway, uh, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Grilled cheese on toast. And I thought, wait a minute. If I turn the toaster on its side and I put the bread and the cheese in laterally, I'll screw you, George Foreman. I've got a griller. Uh, you don't want to get out of it and forget. Like three minutes later, dang, the dangs! Two toasted cheese missiles straight out the window. It's going to be that chunk of the so much better if you guys had rocked up in the middle of it. But anyway, here we go. Do you like my shirt? I just, uh, I'm just sweating in it. It's, uh, it's good. Are you having a good time? You having a good time so far? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Have you ever heard of stage sign? Uh oh. <laughs> it's all over. Um, but no, I was talking about being lazy. And here's the thing, right? I was in the mines. Come on in, girls. Uh, I was in the mines of Western Australia. I wasn't working, I'm told you I'm pretty lazy. But we're in the mines in Western Australia and um, I had to get breakfast in one of the sumptuous cafeterias on site, in the mine site. And uh, I've never asked this question, and I believe you've resided in Britain, haven't you? Britain, yeah. Um, and, okay, so I'm going to ask this question, Brittany. What, how long does it take to cook a goddamn crumpet. I don't know what it is. A crumpet? <laughs> Does anybody here know what a crumpet is? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> really? No, it's, it's not cooking. It's, it's, it, look, it's basically it's executive toast. All right? It's no big deal. Except, all right, I'll just, I'll come back to you. Um, so you know what I'm saying? How long does it take to cook a crumpet? Two minutes. I reckon if there's a fire in your house, get under a crumpet. You've got an hour. Before you can turn it over, even another hour. What are they made of asbestos? You know what? Um, you know what? Uh, I reckon. Um, uh, I reckon what we need to do is we need to identify what's going on here. But things have changed, and I don't. I don't want to get. Too controversial here. But things have changed due to the pandemic, and uh, it's very hard to meet people these days. I uh, I went on a dating app, and I met this girl, and uh, people are quite dishonest. People misrepresent themselves. And I said to her, I called around and I said to her, I looked at her photo and I said, "You don't look anything like this photo." And she goes, "Yeah, but to be fair, in that photo, I don't look this disappointed." <laughs> Gee, how about us going on down here, right? Uh, yeah, not so good. Alright, um, uh, you know, I'm coming, I'm sitting with a few. You need to go, hey, here's something you want to try to. You know, this is a little warning to you. Do you know bouncy castles? Young men, do you know what I'm talking about? Bouncy castles? Very dangerous in the high winds. We, we had one in our backyard three weeks ago. God knows where it came from. Just full of kids going, oh, my neck. But, um, but that's how we keep employed. Here's something else too. Young man, are you studying? Yes. You are. That's good. <laughs> Preface with a laugh, but yes, I'm studying. 
Well, stick at it, my young friend, because otherwise you'll end up doing what I do for a living. Here's the thing, guys. I love, I'm trying, I love history. I'm going back. I'm loving history. I'm trying to get the education I failed to get the first time around. And I love history. Here's, here's something you may not know. You know the ancient Egyptians is one of the world's oldest modern civilizations. Are you aware that 5,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians, did you know they had stone pillows? Did you know that? That's how they used big rocks as pillows. Now, how did you sleep? Oh, terrible. <laughs> oh, no. My neck is stuck, right? I think I'm going to have to go to the Cairo. Oh, no, my car is there. I don't really just, I don't care. I know why. Well, I understand um, what I would say. You gave me some information about your printing, and uh, one of the things they said was, you don't panic when things are going wrong, which is good, right, at this very minute. Um, <laughs> I'm just, just, you don't look happy. <laughs> you look like it's your 60th birthday, mate. That's all right, I've got a... I don't know that long to go. Um, but, you know, we're stuck at sea. Well, we call this at sea. Um, you've got to try new things in life, don't you? You've got to, you've got to have a bit. Fortune favours the brave. Exactly. And I don't know about you, but I try new things all the time. Even, uh, for example, I cannot play a musical instrument. But every now and then, I'll see one, I'll have a go, just in case I've learnt. Oh, the guitar! No, still crap. All right, but you yeah, persevere with it. Folks, I uh, let's tell you something else. I'm struck by being at sea like this. I was watching this really interesting documentary by um, who's that guy? James Cameron. You know that weird last director. And uh, James Cameron, he had a theory that life could exist on the planet Earth without the need of sunlight, sunlight or oxygen, which are the two great providers of life on Earth. And he proved it. What he did was, he took a bathyscope, right? A deep sea submarine, three kilometers below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. And there he found life. There he found a fish that survives by dwelling over the volcanic cracks in the ocean floor. And from time to time, those cracks release their subterranean magma or lava, the fish subsumes that heat energy into its body and that way it perpetuates its own life force. That's extraordinary. But in order to survive, the fish has an exterior skin that can withstand temperatures, just get this right, minus 30 degrees below Celsius up to 700 degrees Celsius. And I thought, jeez, how would you cook that? <laughs> My oven only goes up to 450. <laughs> I haven't got enough fishery in the game. Hey, do you want to try me back in the freezer? Anyway, these, these crumpets doing nothing. Anyway, um, now, can I just ask? I didn't find out so you. Where do do you live? Point Cook. Oh, the right side of town. That's good. Okay. Because I, I was driving down, you know, Cheston Shopping Centre. You know, Cheston Shopping Centre is. Girls, you know what Cheston Shopping Centre? You know it's the largest shopping centre in the Southern Hemisphere, all right? And it gets bigger. Hey, don't take her photo, she's supposed to be somewhere else. But, um, oh my God, that was pretty, pretty classy. Um, she, um, here's the thing about Cheston Shopping Centre, right? They keep building onto it, they keep building more Cheston Shopping Centre because, and I don't want to appear to be sexist, it's because some of you girls you like your shoes a little bit too much, you know? You like shoes, don't you? <laughs> that was the guiltiest look when I said it. I could tell because she went, oh, yeah, shoes. And you like shoes, you know? How many, how many pairs of shoes do you have, Mars? You don't know? No? Huh? And your mum? Mum, do you, you, did she get, do you have a lot of shoes? She has a lot, okay. My happy pairs of shoes you got? Three? Yeah. Four. Three is normal, right? And I said that one day I was working at 
and he, and I said to this guy, how many pairs of shoes you got? He goes, three, and I went, three pairs, and he goes, no, I've got three shoes. Uh, and I said, what do you mean? He said, I've got a pair of runners, and I've got a good shoe, in case I have to go to a wedding, and I just stand side on. Uh, but that's not the point. Like, Chaps and Shopping Centre gets bigger all the time. It grows, it burgeons ever thus. I thought nothing of this until I was going down the Pian Highway, and I'm not sure if you'll know this, I was going down the Pian Highway past that shopping centre, um, Southland, right? And Southland Shopping Centre, like some bushfire, has leapt on the Nepean Highway and it's heading towards Chadston. In the meantime, several kilometres away, Chadston is advancing towards Southland. And then I realised it was all part of this mad plan for these two shopping centres to eventually join up to form this enormous barrier that stops people from damning on getting into the city. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, is it? Hey, I did see a lava one before, so I'm, I'm, I feel like you know, I'm going to tick that boss. It could have been just when I tripped. It's a nice. Folks, not that long to go. It's all night. You know, and uh, if you like, we can just get all the strong men to just throw me over the side. It doesn't matter. I just live over there. I'll just float home. I, um, do I, oh, here's something I don't normally do, but you're a lovely crowd. I just have a little treat I've got for you. Oh, no, it's still crap. All right, anyway. All oh, right, okay. Well, don't worry, it's good. It's coming. It's coming, man. We're going to film it. You can have a look at it later and go, oh, the boy's good. Right. Oh, yeah, it's great coming down here. We're going under the bridge. I'm going to tell you a couple more things and we'll get, I'll get out of your way. I, um, I do, I do come out. I'm, I'm glad that you have two syllables in your name. When we say happy birthday to fourth, I feel sorry for all those Aussies just with that Bob. Now, happy birthday, dear Bob. This is sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I, um, I'll tell you this. I grew up on a farm in Australia. I grew up on a farm the first five years of my life. And like a lot of people on the land in Australia, unfortunately, we lost our farm in a flood. I can still remember the trauma as a five-year-old boy of watching my father pouring over the insurance policy on the kitchen table as the floodwaters visibly rose around our farmhouse, only for Dad to discover in that insurance policy we were not insured against floods. Now, I don't know if anyone here has ever tried to set fire to a wet farmhouse in a flood full of crumpets. <laughs> Takes a lot to get that. Oh my god, look at the size of me. That's really good. Okay, folks, I, I, I'm going to get out of here. I, I want you to have a happy birthday. Uh, it's, it's been wonderful. Thank you for having me here. I want to tell you this um, I'm, I'm not just a stand up comedian, folks. I'm a writer, I'm a director. Uh, I, I actually lecture at a university on writing from time to time. Uh, obviously, I'm a big noter. Uh, I'm a bitch, I'm a lover. Mostly bitch. Uh, yeah, you got the song good. I, uh, I don't just do comedy for money though. I realised some time ago you can conceal a message in a joke. And my message, just in case you don't get it, my message is, and I want to impress this one of young people, I don't like bullies. I always try to stand up to bullies. I try to bully the bully back. Alright? Yeah. I'm not, not saying you're a bully. I'm saying it's more likely. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? I, I, like to, I like to stand up the voice, and I, I fell afoul of the mafia. Right? And they, I don't know if you've seen the film The Godfather, but the mafia gave me a warning in a very brutal way. They cut off a horse's head and put it in my bed as a warning. Have you seen the film? Do you know what I'm talking about? They did that as a warning because they're too stupid to write a note. Right? And I've woken up with a really bad hangover, which some of you are going to have tomorrow. Right? And it's going to be a Ned Kelly, Ned Kelly hangover. It's going to be you wake up, you can just see through that little visor like that. And I look down under the, under the doona. Oh, jeez. Under the doona, I see the gruesome outline of a bloody gory seven horses head. I looked down and I went, oh my god, no, jeez! 
of eight million a whole horse. <laughs> He's just trying to get that head down, please. My name is Brad Lewis. Thank you very much for having me. Really enjoy your night out here on the water. Cheers. las alas de mi fantasía yo tengo un amor que le da paz a mis días yo tengo un amor que mi fe mi alegría en mi espada mi escudo la luz que me guía yo tengo un amor que sienta en mi piel su poesía que me quiere como soy que no vive si no estoy que va siempre metida en mis sueños donde quiera que yo voy que me quiere como soy que no vive si no estoy que va siempre metida en mis sueños donde quiera que yo voy un amor que me alienta, me mima y me ama, que se entrega en cuerpo y alma al amor, al amor. Un amor que da todo y que nada reclama, porque está siempre viva la llama del amor, de su Tus 
palabras Todo me gusta de ti Tiene una sonrisa que me hace suspirar Y una miradita dulce cual paral
quickly. Now we are ready to go ahead. We've got some uh, wonderful performance in front of me. I've been told they're the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so everybody give it up for the Team NT Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles.
playing this tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be opening up the dance floor from now on. So everybody stay on.
So firstly, I have to say that I'm so much in love with uh, what Celia also, and uh, I sort of sense her anxiety. Yes. But thanks for everyone. You know, I'm uh, I'm so happy. it was really a surprise. I thought she's taking me to some uh, strip bar or something. You know. <laughs> Uh, a belly dance or something like that. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe, maybe when we go home, no. <laughs> So when Akshay turns uh, 18, he's going to do a rap song for us. He's going to rap dance. He's a, he's a rapper. Oh. He's a rapper. <laughs> Uh, 
No, 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 no. no. Oh, you should. Let him turn 18. Let him turn. Let him turn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all coming. Thank you. Last but not least, uh, Shanil. Thank you so much. If you guys need a person on the last minute basis and who makes it happen, here you go, Shanil. What's your number? Uh, <laughs> I saved it as Shanil, so I can't remember the number. So, and Shanil was introduced to me by Pr uh, Pranay. And uh, Pranay said, hey, listen, you want to chat with this guy and find out? So I chatted and yeah, it worked. <laughs> so thanks to Shanil and Praveen. Praveen meet Praveen. <laughs> so Praveen uh, agreed, uh, next to Divya, of course. Divya who did the deco. Uh, Praveen was probably engaged just a few days ago. Yeah, and he, he did an amazing job. He managed uh, the, the back end for me in terms of the live streaming and Thanks to his wife. Anusha. 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 She is the videographer behind me and he is the, the photographer behind me. I'm sorry, Prane, we would have engaged you, but we wanted you involved. Prane is a wonderful Manish photographer. Huh? Manish. Oh, Manish. Yeah. Yes, he is the guy behind the live streaming. Yes, <laughs> Prane uh, was my go to, but I knew that he needed to be part of this whole event. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Freddie has got a whole load of uh, different uh, background, you know, finance guy, CFO of a company, BOM, currently no, but now <laughs> it's moving. And he's got a passion which is photography. So, yeah, so he was my go to. But I said, no, he's going to be part of the event. So I, I told him, don't feel offended. I'm not taking you. But yeah. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Baku. Yeah, for chatting with me while I could not chat back yesterday and you called me and I was like, oh my god! <laughs> and Praveen asked me, very well, who, why is Vakal calling you? What's going on? So, yeah, I had to come up with why excuses and guess what? My children was checking my messages and says, Amma, Vakul uncle is messaging you. And Praveen immediately looked at me, oh, why is Vakul messaging you? See, there you go. You see, I had to manage I all said, this. I I had to manage all this in the last few months. Uh, yeah, thanks to myself. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good.